Welcome to another version of Pearls of Wisdom. I'm Dennis Leonard, President and CEO of Delta Dental of Massachusetts. And this is our last episode of the year. I think like most people, we all feel like 2020 couldn't end fast enough. But at least today, we're ending with a great topic and an even better speaker. Our guest today is Dr. Jeremy Horst, Director of Clinical Innovation at DentaQuest. And our topic is minimally invasive dentistry. Jeremy, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Dennis. It's an honor to be here with you today. Great, and we appreciate you doing this. As with most things today, this is by Zoom. We like to have our guests in person, but COVID has changed everything. Jeremy, um, tell us a little bit about yourself before we end up uh, talking a little bit about this great topic. Wonderful, yeah. Well, I'm a pediatric dentist, uh, still practicing. Um, I'm a scientist. I, I like to call myself a computational biologist, and I've been spending my career uh, trying to bring both of those interests and skills in, into the public health domain to improve uh, oral health uh, for, for all. That's terrific. And we're so happy to have you, even though it's from California, your home in California. <laughs> um, so the topic today is minimally invasive dentistry. And for a lot of people, uh, they don't understand what that is. So tell us a little bit about what you think it is, how it has evolved, and especially how it's kind of taken off recently. Mm. Yeah, minimally invasive dentistry is really about using techniques and technology that uh, decrease the invasiveness of dentistry that, um, you know, a lot of people don't get up in the morning and, and want to get a, a needle and a drill as a treatment for the most common disease in the United States. Um, and so it's, it's the exploration and thankfully the success of identifying uh, techniques and um, agents, liquids, for example, uh, that can just be brushed onto the teeth or otherwise just done less invasively, putting uh, more of a medical approach uh, to the care of caries or periodontal disease. And so a great example is silver diamine fluoride. Uh, that was cleared by the United States FDA just in 2014, uh, but it's actually been in use in Japan for about 50 years now and many other countries ever since. And so this is um, a real breakthrough for minimally invasive dentistry because uh, it can just be brushed on to most cavities um, and stop or at least slow um, those, those cavities. Uh, it can also prevent new cavities uh, in areas where anywhere it touches. So there's um, sort of this, this opportunity for uh, less invasive, therefore more efficient, perhaps less expensive uh, care that can then open up the dental system to uh, provide more access for all. Um, and also more effective treatment of the disease itself, leading to less recurrent cavities down the line. Jeremy, one of the advantages of minimally invasive dentistry is that it reduces the amount of aerosols in the, in the dental office. And that certainly is really critical during COVID, but tell, tell us why it's important post-COVID as well. <laughs> Absolutely, and you're right, uh, these, these minimally invasive techniques um, have gotten a lot of attention since March um, because uh, they don't generate aerosols. They don't kick up a bunch of dust into the air or splatter or spatter or microbial aerosols that could transmit um, COVID and, and other infectious diseases. And, and because of that, the, the WHO and the American Dental Association have really um, highlighted their use and, and recommended their use by all uh, during the COVID uh, shutdowns. But thereafter, um, again, it's, it's a little... Uh, simpler and people like simple um, you know so there's there's not just one but we have a range of minimally invasive techniques now uh, so silver diamine fluoride is incredibly effective um, and it has the side effects of not tasting very good and, and turning cavities black and so between the back teeth or in a back tooth um, very few people care about that some people do uh, in front teeth more people care um, and the taste you know, I'm a pediatric dentist. Um, I treat the most sensitive, difficult to, um, to tolerate dental care uh, folks you can imagine. Um, they're not excited about the flavor. And so it works. If I get on there, it works for sure. And I use it all, all day, every day. Um, but there's also another, um, another material called Curadont Repair Fluoride Plus um, that I've been looking into that's been in the United States for a couple of years now that doesn't taste bad. And it doesn't, um, it doesn't turn the cavity black. It doesn't seem to be quite as effective, but it's an example that these two materials 
together and then with other materials that we're starting to introduce down the line, we, we're starting to have medicines for cavities. Um, and so if you think about what the average consumer wants, what uh, the high-end consumer, what the low-end consumer wants, um, a lot of them want less um, chemicals injected into their blood, like local anesthetics. A lot of them uh, have fear of a, of a drill, the sound of a drill. They have fear of loss of control while all of the operative dentistry is happening. Um, and this is just an incredible solution for those folks. Um, and so we're, we're really, you know, I'm really interested in, in sharing with dentists uh, how to use these and how to approach them. Um, and what we've seen in particular uh, that tells us that this is going to last beyond COVID um, is that two years ago, 2018, almost exactly October 2018, uh, the American Dental Association uh, created the non-restorative uh, caries treatment guideline, uh, which, which recommended that we use these materials to, to control caries um, and that this be standard uh, going forward as an offering. Jeremy, you talked about silver diamine fluoride, uh, and that can be a game changer, particularly in community care settings. What are some of the other exciting breakthroughs you see in minimally invasive dentistry in the future? Yeah, so what I mentioned earlier about Curidont Repair Fluoride Plus, that, that's exciting. Uh, it actually rebuilds the tooth structure itself. Uh, one of the great um, advances is really something that's been around for a long time, but people didn't know how to use it properly and the technology hadn't quite come around, and that's glass ionomer cements. Um, so there's been material advancements um, and there's been technique um, know-how that have brought this into the forefront um, in, in the populations where people have the most cavities. Um, and we've seen that it has incredible outcomes in terms of reducing recurrent caries in particular, which all of uh, your member dentists know is an issue. You place a beautiful restoration, how long is it gonna last until uh, the caries lesions come back around the margins of the restoration, the crown, uh, what have you. And so it turns out that glass ionomer has superior outcomes uh, for, for those. It also prevents cavities nearby. And it's incredibly simple to place. We just don't place it like we place composite. It's just a different technique. Um, but in particular, again, for any place where you would be doing a sealant or a, a patient who doesn't have the cooperative skills uh, to deal with normal dentistry, um, you know, you basically clean the tooth and then put this into pit and fissure system or a cavity. Um, and it therapeutically treats the tooth. It makes it harder. It makes the tooth um, more resilient to cavities, regardless of the filling material. So there's there's been some sort of um, just replacement technology, like glass ionomer replacing some of the plastics that we have. Um, and there's been some more advances in liquid materials like silver fluoride and cured out repair fluoride plus that really represent exciting opportunities for uh, for progress in more effective, more efficient uh, dental care. Jeremy, COVID-19 has spiked interest in some of these techniques. How do you respond to people that say this is just a short-term phenomenon? Yeah, well, we saw uh, before the pandemic started uh, the fastest adoption of, of silver diamond fluoride um, out of any uh, new technique or material or device that we've ever seen in dentistry. It, it came into uh, pediatric dentistry and was adopted more rapidly than, than the high-speed handpiece. It's just uh, been incredible. And a lot of that was driven by the patients themselves, um, by parents not wanting their kids to be sedated or anesthetized for dental treatment in particular, uh, from uh, pop media outlets like the New York Times and the Post uh, highlighting these materials. So the difference is that folks know about it and they're asking for it. And these things don't always work. I mean, nothing in dentistry works 100%. And so um, you know, time has shown us that we're starting to understand how to stratify uh, the use of these materials, um, but that, you know, the patients themselves are asking for it. They're seeking out minimally invasive dentistry. Um, they are seeing that it's supported by American Dental Association uh, and other academies and organizations worldwide. Um, and so there's validity to it, unlike um, some of the other approaches to, <laughs> to alternative dentistry. Uh, like the holistic dentistry approach that that's people seek, but there's no science behind it. Um, consumers are seeing that there's science behind this and they're seeking alternatives. So Jeremy, I'm sure you've piqued the interest of many dental professionals around minimally invasive dentistry. Where else can they go to learn more about this topic? 
Wonderful question. So, uh, you know, many outlets are, are offering continuing education on these courses. Uh, the companies that, that sell the materials, like for silver diamine fluoride, for example, Elevate Oral Care, uh, does CEs online webinars um, all the time. They have an offering on, they have offerings on their websites. Um, you know, GC America, 3M, Riva, they all do uh, CEs, you know, who are a little focusing on their materials, but really the utilization for minimally invasive dentistry um, and all the other CE outfits. Of course, the American Dental Association every year, uh, one of us minimally invasive dentistry experts uh, presents. We often have panels to talk about nuance and, and details of, of protocols. Um, uh, YouTube has a hall crown technique video that's been viewed over 300,000 times. Uh, and so I don't know how many of those were dentists, how many of those were parents, but that, that's a technique um, that you kind of have to see it to believe it, uh, where you pick the right size of stainless steel crown for a tooth that has any manner of cavity, as long as the cavity is not in the pulp, baby tooth, and uh, use glass animer cement to put the crown on over the tooth without any preparation, most of the time without any numbing or anything at all. I like to use a little topical, um, but it's just, you know, fundamentally challenges everything that we thought we knew about dentistry. Um, and so you got to see it. How do you see it? There's a YouTube video. Um, and so we have CEs about this. Um, we're publishing more and more. We are um, trying to get a couple papers out that, that show just a very simple algorithm of, you know, if you have an active cavity, is it cavitated? Is there an actual hole? If there is an actual hole, is it cleansable in terms of a toothbrush versus a plaque trap? Does the saliva flow through it? Um, is it accessible? Can you look at it directly and paint your material right on it? And those three questions, it turns out, dictate whether you can uh, trust something like silver diamine fluoride to work effectively, uh, or whether you really need to have a filling, but maybe you don't need to um, excavate the cavity. Uh, or whether you do need to do either a traditional filling if it's a permanent tooth or a, um, a hall crown for a baby tooth. So um, there's more educational materials than ever. Uh, there's always new ones and a lot of the CE outfits uh, have their recordings online for you to access. Jeremy, thank you so much. You've been a wealth of information and in my build up saying you'd be a great guest uh, came to fruition. So great job on that. It's clear that minimally invasive dentistry is not a trend, it's here to stay. And we also have information on our website for anyone that's uh, looking for uh, information on minimally invasive dentistry. Jeremy, thank you so much for a very informative session around minimally invasive dentistry. I'm sure all of our dental professionals have learned an awful lot. We also would ask that they go to our website where we have more information. So Jeremy, this is our last session. We went out with a bang in 2020 and we're looking forward to getting into 2021. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure and an honor, Dennis. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you.